Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Objective Leaders Portion of the show. And I'm Joe Mauricio. Right now, this afternoon, we are here live at the Stegen's Martial Arts. And my guest today is no other than Mr. Stegen himself and a group of his fighters, Team America versus. Hey, you just came back from the Philippines, Joe. Yes, uh, we just recently came back from uh, the Philippines. Uh, we competed in the the Goodwill Games, uh, the Yao Yan, uh, kickboxing, Goodwill Games. And, uh, it happened in uh, Manny Pacquiao Highland. It's, it's, uh, it's a really cool event. Yeah, it's, it's actually uh, where Manny Pacquiao started. That's all the equipment there. They fought in the gym where uh, actually Manny Pacquiao trained. So the, the ring that they fought in was the, the ring that uh, Manny Pacquiao uh, sparred. So they produce a lot of fighters from there. A lot of good boxers come there, MMA fighters. So it's a pretty cool event. Look like you're producing a lot of good fighters here in Chicago. Uh, can you? Do you have the names of your uh, fighters here? Yeah, they can introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Ryan Bajores. I'm a Yao Yan fighter. I'm Jonathan Kaya. I do Yao Yan and Taekwondo. Uh, I'm Anthony Schlecker. I do Yao Yan as well. Wow. Yeah, they're they're kind of shy uh, on camera, but in the ring, they're not shy at all. I know, and uh, they happen to be uh, a fighter in the Philippines not too long ago, right? They You fought... Uh, and uh, how many fighters did you send? We, uh, we actually took a team. Uh, Yao Yan is the Philippine style of kickboxing. It's been established by Grandmaster Napoleon Fernandez in 1970s. Uh, it's really big. It's a lot of practitioners. Um, we competed against Team Philippines. So we represented a uh, Yao Yan Team America. So I brought these three guys. They stayed in the Philippines for, uh, what about, more or less about three weeks. They lived in the gym. They they uh, they lived like Filipinos. I mean, took the jeepney, tricycle, you know, oh took bats with tabo. I mean, oh you know, yeah. yeah. They had a great time. They ate toyo, everything. I mean, balot, everything. They, they enjoyed it. They enjoyed the trip. Ryan, uh, how did you play in the Philippines? I won my fight. I feel really confident. I have a great team to support me, and that's all that matters. I was the runner-up in my fight. Um, I really enjoyed the training camp though in the Philippines. Uh, we had great coaches, we learned so much, and it was a beautiful thing being at the home of what we train. So that's what meant most to me. Uh, sorry, I was able to win my fight in the Philippines. And yeah, I was staying in the gym, it was crazy. It was a lot of fun. It was uh, a lot of like, a lot of cardio, a lot of drills and stuff. It was, it was really good training and I had a great time fighting too. Speaking of training, uh, are the Filipinos uh, uh, ahead of you or just behind you in, in terms of training? Uh, well, it depends. Cardio, yeah, it depends on uh, what we're talking about. Like, Philippines is rich with, you know, uh, martial arts. Like, you know, defended the, the country with bows, knives, sticks, arrows, right? Back yeah. in the Lapu-Lapu yeah, yeah. days. So you have a lot of warrior mentality there. The only difference I think is the, uh, in, you know, training in America and the Philippines is the, uh, the system, like the, the science. Because they have here, they have equipment, they have the supplements, you know. They, I mean, that's the advantage here. But, I mean, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody over there. So, like, they fought some, some warriors from... Uh, Kampilan, Kampilan, Yao Yan Kampilan. Basically, like Kaya had to fight a guy that is a professional, professional fighter, and he's an amateur. He only has like one fight, but he went, you know, he went in the ring and and fought the guy, no problem. You know, he was also probably one of the biggest Filipinos I've ever seen. So, <laughs> you know, but um, the experience was awesome. I mean, we also trained in Kalibo, uh, uh, which is you know by yeah, Boracay. Yeah. So we lived in Boracay for about a week. And then went to Calibo, trained over there. Um, Did you stop by the uh, McDonald's over there in Calibo? McDonald's. There's like McDonald's. And the McDonald's there, they have chicken. <laughs> chicken and rice. You know, I mean, these guys, these guys had a good time. Well, we should have known. We have some friends. We can put you up there yeah. at Calibo and, uh, and Boracay. But, but anyway, how about you? Uh, what, what's, uh, what's next to you after the... Up to taking second place, are you 
It's nothing in the uh, in your mind that uh, it's not going to be second place anymore. Well, I mean, I'm here to train for longevity, not just one fight. So there's going to be more fights to come. Right now, I'm training for my Taekwondo tournament, uh, August 20th, um, and I hope to win that. But one fight is just one fight to me. There's tons more. <laughs> okay, for the champion. Uh uh, just a lot more training, a lot more training, uh, more competition, but but more training. So it's like uh, more so being focused on fine tuning what I learned. I learned a lot of new things in the Philippines, uh, a lot of new kicks, a lot of just uh, just a lot of more technique that I just want to hone down and and uh, get to be like second nature in my in like my weapons. Mr. Stegen, uh, is diet part of your training? Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. Dieting is a big part of training. At the same time, uh, a lot of mental too, because uh, everybody wants to eat good, you know. Yeah. That's so that's that's. that's and, and, and yeah. All those <laughs> but but uh, well, that's that's why you know when you run a martial arts gym, you have to instill that discipline into your students. You have to kind of. You have to kind of be like a, a, a dictator to them that, you know, when you say goes, because, you know, I mean, how are you going to share them your experience, you know, without them listening? So you have to kind of teach them how to follow. So like, like just like in any war, right? Yeah. If you have soldiers that are willing to die for the cost, you're going to win that battle or that war. So when you run a gym, you have to be able to convince them that, hey, you guys should listen to me. Because I've been here, I've done this, this is what we do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you go to a high-level school, they know what to do. But like I said, you know, we've been around since 1993. I've known you guys since I was like <laughs> 21 years old. I, I, I wasn't even a policeman at the time, yeah. you know. I'm, I'm, I'm almost retiring. That's how long I've known you guys. So yeah. this, this school's been around that long. So what we learn, you know, in that time span, it's just, just so much, so much, so many different things. Uh, learn the tricks, you know, tweak a fighter in a certain way so they can win. Because you can be like a great athlete, you know, but at the same time, if, uh, you know, you're not uh, fine-tuned to, to be the certain person, you're not going to win. Like, like saying with Anthony here, Anthony uh, just fought for this belt. He challenged uh, a really good champion. Um, you know, this guy actually has like, I believe, 12 titles and you know, a uh, high-level glory fighter. Is this from the Philippines? Also? No, that's here. So that's here. He, he did a training camp in the Philippines, and uh, he came back here and challenged a, a really, really high-level champion. So we won, you know, we won, you know, we won the belt. So now they're asking for a rematch, so we're kind of taking our time on that. We're kind of studying what, what options we have. But to win that, you know, sacrificing how he did, like he lived in the gym while we were, like, partying because when their fight was done, we went to a wedding, and he, he chose to stay in the gym. He says, let me stay in the gym. And he lived there for like a week, but, you know, by himself. That's discipline. That's discipline, and that's dedication. He dedicated. He embraced the grind. You know what I mean? And he won. So for, for you guys out there training, you have to embrace the sacrifice. You have to embrace the grind. If you don't do that, you only go a certain, yeah. certain distance in your career or in your fighting sports. So that's, that's what we teach, right? We try to push that, hey, you know what? Matter of fact, I never, I never like, told him that you should stay. I asked him. It was his choice. Do you want to go to the wedding or do you want to go stay in the gym? That's so he good. says, I'll stay in the gym. Passion for the sports. And knowing the Philippines, you know, we don't have showers. Like, we, you know, there's no air conditioning. I mean, you know, it's hot. But he trained like two, three times a day. He ate fish and chicken, you know. Like home, home, homemade, right? He washed his own clothes over there and everything. So, but that's that's the lesson, right? Um, they they've experienced the the fighters that fight for twenty dollars. They fight for twenty dollars to su to support their family, you know. So imagine the opportunity you have here in America, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. And we're taking things for granted here in America. You know, you can practice as much as you want and get the. Th the state-of-the-art uh, equipment available to you, and the good teachers and good masters. Uh, so how long, uh, you're, you're going to have a rematch 
And how long will it take for you to, to, to prepare for that? Well, they want the rematch immediately. So right now, uh, you know, he, he really uh, sacrificed a lot. So he want to kind of take a little bit of time for himself. You know, he's, this guy does like rap music and he's an artist. He draws, he paints, he's a painter. So he's got a lot of things going on in his life. And that's up, that's up to him, really. I mean, I'm, I'm here. We, we have to be here. We ha you know, I mean, we train every day here, basically. So, but that's up to him whenever he wanted, you know, to, to take that rematch. You know, like, like Ryan here, that's his first win, and he fought against a guy that's pretty experienced. I mean, it, you know, I mean, it's, it's great experience for them, but where does that go, right? So now you got it started, you, you lit up the fire, where are you going to take it? You know what I mean? That's up to them. I mean, I can't make them train, I can't make them diet, I can't make them not eat certain things, or I can't, like, make them run up and down the street. You know, they got to want it, and they got to come here and say, hey, right. you know, coach, I'm back, I want to do this. Because I did it. I mean, I, I did this probably, you know, in my Taekwondo career, I don't know, over 200 times. You know, being here right now is, a, is just a proof of what their dedication and passion to the sport. You know, uh, they're here every day, aren't they? Uh, are they practicing, practicing every day? Uh, most of the times they do come, uh, if they, especially if there's a date. They're, they're, they show a lot of discipline, you know what I mean? They, they dedicate to that. But remember, there are fighters and there are martial artists. A martial artist train just because he's a martial artist. A fighter usually just train when he has a fight. Yeah. So, you know. What are you guys? I, I cannot answer that question, so let's ask. All right. <laughs> I would say I'm more of a fighter, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> 100% martial artist. I'm here till after closing. I say I'm somewhere in the middle because I'm always training. But, you know, to prepare for a fight is a different kind of training for me. So I would say it's like somewhere in the middle because I'm not always 100% fight ready just when I'm not having a fight in mind. Your family, this is, you guys are sacrificing a lot of time for the sports. Uh, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, and possibly your education, is sac you, you, you sacrifice that also. So uh, is it taking a toll uh, in terms of your relationship with your family? I would say no, because my family would rather me be in the gym than out messing around getting in trouble. But if I'm not... <laughs> but if I'm not at the gym, I'm usually at work. Besides from that, weekends is just have fun, I guess. Um, so I, I'm done with school, finished school. I got my bachelor's degree in exercise science. Um, I did everything the right way, I guess, how mom would want me to have done it. And uh, I told myself after I'm done with my degree that I'm going to do me. I want to take the risks. I want to do everything that I've always wanted to do. And of course I have a cutoff limit when, hey, if I don't get to do everything before this age, it's time to get serious. But right now I can donate my time to martial arts and that's what I love. Um, I think it's all about like time management. Uh, I do have a lot of things going on, so it's definitely hard to manage time between everything. But my, my family is like, they're, of course, worried about me fighting. They don't ever come to my fights. They can't watch me fight and all that kind of stuff. But they enjoy it. They, they know that it's been good for me. They know that martial arts, I mean, it's the discipline, the, the focus, you know, the sacrifice. These are all, like, like life lessons. And if you, can, if you can really internalize those things, then, you know, they'll improve your life. So my, my family, although they, they worry about the safety aspect of it, they are, I would say, grateful for, you know, just the organization that it brought to my life outside of competition. All right. How about you, Jojo? Well, here's the thing. Okay, I'm in my, well, I'm, I'm 46 this year, right? No, you're not that yeah, old. well, I know, I look young, right? That's yeah, good because yeah. of martial arts, you know? Yeah. But um, April this year, I did a competition. Right? I, haven't, I haven't fought, like, I think, in 12 years. 
But I noticed something out of my guys. I said, uh, man, these guys are coming in and out, like whenever they want. You know what I mean? So I said, you know what? I'm jumping back. I'm going to do competition. Being married, having three kids, right? Uh, running a full-time business, right? Being a full-time police officer. So I, you know, I, I lost, like, what did I lose? About 22 pounds. I cut weight. I trained every day. A week before my fight, I hurt my leg. One week before, right? You were there, right? I was fighting that guy right there, actually, when I heard it. But I sold like almost 200 tickets for this fight. And knowing me, I'm stubborn. You know, I, I'm kind of borderline crazy, right? When it comes down to this kind of stuff. I know, I know. I'm a fanatic. Like, like I, I, I'll do it. So Monday that, that week, I said, oh, I feel okay. I can continue the fight. So I jumped back in the ring, fought this guy. Second round, I mean, the guy never really touched me, not even once, right? But the second round, I hurt my leg doing because he got stuck in the mat. So I hurt my leg. I didn't win the fight, but if you watch the fight, it never touched me, right? But that doesn't matter. To me, winning or losing doesn't matter. That whenever you do something like this, you will always win because you will always learn something from the experience. And that's what I try to share with my students. So if you give yourself an excuse to not do something, why don't you give yourself a reason to do something instead of an excuse, right? So my reason was, my motivation was, is to show them that it doesn't matter if, if you put it in your heart and your mind, whatever the obstacle is, you, you, you're going to go right through it. It doesn't matter in life. I don't care what goes in front of you, all right? If you have that mentality of a winner, you're going to go right through it. Okay, you guys are really a winner. And, and you know, if there are some Filipino business people in Chicago or in Illinois that would like to sponsor this team, do it. Give Jojo a call. Stegans Martial Arts, 6001 uh, Irving Park Road. That's on the corner of uh, Austin and Irving Park. And our phone number here is 773-685-2000. So you just Google us. You'll find it. If you don't know who I am, just Google me. You'll know who I am, I think. Right? Yes. And uh, I, I really like uh, for, for the Filipino businessmen, not only Filipino business, but any ethnic groups here in Chicago that would like to sponsor this team because they're going to go look at these paces. Those are the paces of a champion. You're going to watch them in four, two, three years from now. They will be the champion because Jojo is going to guide them to, that goal, uh, to reach that goal. Absolutely. And in a little bit, you're going to see... Uh the future. I have I have some young girls here that are uh, doing other styles, so they're gonna get a little bit of uh, footage that you'll see uh, how they move and how they work. Also, I have in our school we specialize in family. We'll train your whole family, not only for sports and fitness, but we're huge in self defense. All right. Even my wife is learning knives because you gotta balance it out. Okay. Uh, I don't think uh, it's gonna be hard for for a, a woman really. I mean, it's gonna be hard. To defend, you, so you have to equalize. So you have to learn a weapon. You have to learn an equalizer, right? Could it be a mace? Could it be a knife? Could it be any, something? Some some blunt instrument? You know, that's 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 how I think, cause I'm a policeman. So, but survival is the key. I this guy is really crazy. One time, I saw this guy ch going to an alley chasing a guy. And when I saw this guy, I says, "Don't do that. Please don't do that." <laughs> I know you have. You have armor and guns, but you don't chase anybody in the alley at that time. This, like, uh, I remember that, so that afternoon. Well, well, that's my line of work, sir. I mean, uh, you know, I, I pledge to, to do my job, right? So, and I like doing my job good. If you give me a job, if you tell me, hey, you know what, build me a house, I'll do my best to build your house. You know what I mean? And, and that's just like I said, martial arts will make you be the best. Be the best that you can. You know, it's going to bring out your best. Like, that's why these guys here, who would have thought? Like, they're, they're, they're going to be talking about this Philippine adventure when they become grandpas. They're going to tell their grandchildren, hey, man, I went to the Philippines, lived in the gym, fought a guy that's like a professional, and you know what I mean? I won a championship. I mean, it's not, nobody can take that away from you. So that's what you want to do when you're young. You want to build that kind of memories, that kind of uh, chapters in your life. You don't want to close that at a young age. You want to do it while you're strong. I wish I was younger. 
you know, and I can do more of this, you know what I mean? But that's up to them, like I said. But, uh, but we're here, guys. Check us out. So whenever you have time, you want to check us out, you know where we're at. So, again, this is Joe Mauricio, and uh, thank you for sharing your Sunday with us. And remember the faces of champions. This will be your future champion. Again, this is Joe Mauricio saying goodbye. Hello, everyone. I'll introduce you uh, to the Martinez family. They've been with us for about five or six years almost. Uh, here you go, Martinez family. Hi, my name is Maria Martinez, and this is my daughter. Um, hi, my name is Bianca. Um, I've been doing Taekwondo for about seven years and Muay Thai for like six months. Hello, my name is Diego Martinez and I just started Muay Thai and I started Taekwondo for about like two years. Hello, everybody calls me Junior. I've been doing Muay Thai with Joe for like five years. Uh, good place to come. Uh, Bianca is a black belt here with Joe. Competed many times, taking her all over the place. Uh, good place to train at. What they meant by Muay Thai is Yao Yan, but we fight Muay Thai, so that's why they say Muay Thai. We fight Muay Thai rules, so it's kind of like a disadvantage for us, but we still win, right guys? But these are your future, so I can honestly say that uh, I have good hopes for uh, their children. Uh, Maria and uh, Junior has been supportive of our gym. So they've been here like they're my family. So everybody that comes here is family. All right. Thank you. Oh. Oh.